Hey, this is Chug, and in this video, we're going to be looking at low sensitivity and some of the issues that can arise from using it and some of the techniques we can use to mitigate them. So before I start, I'll just mention that I don't have a mouse cam, so a number of the things that, I'm want, that I need to explain is going to be very difficult because I can only use words. So if you don't want to sit through that, I'll, I'll link in the description uh, something that helped me understand it better, a I mean, guy who actually had a mouse cam. But uh, I just feel obliged to, to make this so that the people who followed my advice and lowered their sensitivity have something from me that can actually help them. Alright, so first, the issues. The first main issue that you're going to encounter is that you can't really respond to someone behind you. This is if you don't use the proper technique. So if someone, well if I hear someone behind me, turn around to fight them, and then I discover, oh dear, I've run out of mouse pet. I can't actually hit him. Ugh. We don't want that to happen. That's one of the. That's one big issue. Another one is uh, fast characters like Slash and Anarchy may be hard to control without the proper techniques. As you can tell, I have some skill at navigating around corners and, and being alright with Slash, but that's because I employ the right techniques. And someone who didn't may have issues. May think uh, acceleration is the only way for them to actually have the mobility to be able to do this. <clears throat> Before I uh, go into the actual techniques and such, I'll just mention that um, ergonomics is really important. How you sit, how your arm like rests as you grip and move the mouse. You want to aim for a 90 degree angle at your elbow. If you have your arm outstretched, you know, it's, you, it takes too much energy to move your whole arm. You're going to get tired very quick, uh, very quickly, I should say, and it's not ideal. You should try to raise your chair, uh, play with your mouse a bit closer to the edge of your desk. I myself can't get 90 degrees because my chair isn't tall enough, so I, I do the next best at like 85 degrees, 80 degrees, um, but just somewhere around there is good, just so long as it's not inhibiting you and cramping you and restricting your ability to move your arm. Okay, so now I have to explain a term. This is something that I use, it's just in my internal monologue. It's uh, not something I've heard anyone else use, but it actually has two meanings, which makes it even more confusing. But it's called home position. So, in the real world, it, with, your, with your mouse and your arm and your mouse pad, the home position is the most natural feeling place for your mouse to be. So when you sit down at the PC for the first time during the day, it, where, you're, where your mouse sits idle while you're waiting to do something, it's just near the center of your pad, a little bit towards you, and just feels natural. This feels like home. That's why I call it home position. In game, it has a different meaning, or it has, a, it has a, an associated meaning. The home position is wherever your character is facing and looking at whatever it's looking at, while your physical mouse is in the natural home position. So if we set the home position to be on the LG, my mouse is in the natural spot, I can look around, see what's going on over here, have, you know, check for a rail, but um, if I return my mouse to the most natural feeling position, it's going to be in the same spot. And that's the key thing, is that your home position in-game does not change if you do not lift the mouse. That's a couple of negatives, so I'll just say the only way, I'll just restate, the only way to change your home position is to lift your mouse. Okay, so with that we'll get into the exercises. All the situations, I should say. So let's say you're here, you just picked up some health, you're just hanging out, then you decide to come around here and you see an opponent. Okay, we've got to fight. If I pause right now and look at my mouse, if you mirror my, ma my actions here, this will really you know, help you. If I look down at my mouse, it's near the edge of my pad. I can't actually look very much further to the right. I, I could, but it's really cramped. My wrist is to like, turn to the out outside. There's no more space for my mouse to go. It's really poor. This is a bad way to engage a fight. This is not what you want. So there's an error here. So how do we fix it? Ideally, when we turn the corner and we see the guy, we want the home position to be either on him or relatively near him. So how do we do that? As I said before, the only way to change your home position is to lift your mouse. So the key is to lift your mouse before you actually turn the corner. You're anticipating that there may be an opponent, you lift your mouse preemptively and you recenter upon where an enemy may be. So how do we find out 
uh, where to place our mouse in order to do this. So let's say we want our home position to be here, we reverse engineer from this situation. We rotate, we go backwards, we go back here, looking where we were before. And now I look down at my mouse, it is on the left side of my pad, and I can see it distinctly at this angle. I will call this position B. There's a reason I call it position B, we'll get into it later. So position B, learn it, memorize it, it's here. So I pick up my mouse, put it in the natural home position, walk here, pick up my mouse again, put it down in position B, turn the corner, and then flick my mouse to the natural feeling home position, and my crosshair automatically goes to where I want it to be. The key advantage here is that flicking to your home position is very reliable and very quick. So I can quickly, with, with a high degree of accuracy, relatively, you don't actually have to be accurate, so you don't have to be, you know, precise on this is exactly where I want it to be, and since it's here it's a miss. No, anywhere in this general area is fine. Just so long as you're able to respond and react to whatever's in front of you, then you're fine. I had a train of thought that I was going, <laughs> that I was explaining that was really good, but I can't recall what it was. Ah, oh dear. Oh yes. The advantage of doing this is that you can flick very quickly to your, ho to your home position. So learning where position B is, we'll call position B again, is very important. You want to drill this. You want to drill this action of turning the corner. Ideally, if you played CSGO, you know about crosshair placement. You want it to follow around the corner about a centimeter or half an inch, depending on where you are in the world. You want it to be about here as you turn the corner. That's the speed at which you want to you know, flick your mouse to the home position. You don't want to just be like this because if there was an enemy here, you have to flick all the way over here and you don't, you're not actually focused, you're looking at this and he's here. So that's why turning around the corner and really concentrating will actually benefit you. Okay, so that's how you do it for this side. It's the same story for here. You, you start with the final position that you want. I want to be looking here. So you back it up. This is now another position. We can call it position C if you want. Uh, or position B on the right side, whatever. This is a, another position. So, reset, pick up your mouse, home position, pick it up, go to position C, and then turn and fight. So here, my mouse position is dead center where an opponent is likely to be. I hope that's clear enough. This works with corners. This is how, you know, I encourage, this is actually how you should practice it. It's how I originally practiced it. You just practice moving around the map, making 90 degree turns, so here, 90 degrees, 90 degrees, let's go over here, 90 degrees, and you just practice picking up your mouse just before you go around the corner, and tracking around, and that's how you um, are prepared to fight anything that you see. This is how I do sliding. I actually pick up my mouse any time I'm in the air and I'm not firing, it's actually something I noticed while researching, or I say researching, while re reviewing how I do this and and figuring out a good way to explain it. Whenever I'm in the air, I have my mouse in the air, ready to come down, but not, I, uh, it's it's not down until I'm actually just about to, uh, to land, because I want the flexibility to be able to change direction, change my mind at, last sec at the last second. Okay, so that's uh, 90 degree turns. You, also, you can also practice it on the spot, like this, where you can align with the general geometry of the of the area, and you can really refine the motion of picking up and placing it in precisely the right spot. You know, and doing it back the other way, of course. But don't get too caught up in doing this. Really, uh, combining it with corners is what's really going to make you effective, because your instinct is going to be to forget about this as soon as you get in the game and you really want to drill it so that it becomes your natural way to react to turning the corner so you want to build the you know the, the situational memory to be able to do it in game under pressure so you don't have to think about it okay so that's one of the issues uh, the other issue is what if someone's behind you well as you may imagine it's the same story let's say I'm here watching for you know I'm defending Mega and I hear the lift behind me what am I going to do? Am I going to just going to drag my mouse over and ready to fight? No, because my mouse is almost off the pad. So again, the same story. Start with the ideal end state. What we want, we want our crosshair to be here. 
So we're, we're looking over here. Where do we have to place our mouse? We have to place it down in position A. And this is why we I said it was B earlier, because this is A, it's more to the left. It's, <laughs> you know, planning. Okay, so this is position A. It's very near the corner of my pad, very on the left. So when I'm hanging out here and I hear the pad, my first instinct is to pick up this, well, to dodge a little bit, pick up the mouse, slam it down in position A and flick quickly and then I'm ready to react and flick up here as he gets gets up the jump pad. And this is why we do it, is because it's so reliable, it's a reliable flick. Because if we did it w without, if we didn't uh, pick it up first, we just spin, we have to lift, put it down, and then we have to react. But here, as soon as we see him, we're ready to flick, and I'll go for the pots. Okay, I missed. <laughs> if I had, uh, too soon. Yeah. My flicks have been off today, ironically. After doing my aim video, it's been quite poor. But yeah, it's the same story as you want to practice the muscle memory of picking it up, putting it down at position A, and flicking 180 degrees. This is why people encourage you to really learn how to do your 180 degree turns, but they don't actually explain that you're supposed to do it before you fight, or before you, um, like, as you hear a noise behind you, you do it before you, like, you do it as the instinctual flick to actually face them. This is my instinct now, so um, it doesn't impede me at all. I don't have to think about it. It's actually really efficient and really helpful. I don't feel like the low sensitivity affects me very much. If you do look at my um, uh, Sarnath slash deathmatch video, I have Quad and the LG, and there are two scale bearers. I drop down here and I start to fight them, and I don't have good crosshair. You know, my home position is, is set over here, so when I, I actually run out of space, I have to pick up my mouse and I still can't catch up to him, and I, I can't kill him even though I have Quad and LG. It's uh, quite sad and disappointing, but um, yeah. Okay, is there anything else I wanted to say? Ah, yes. So, a small note if you're down here and you're defending a drop, don't set your home position up here. Because if you're fighting, you, I mean, yeah, you're ready to react to anything you see, but if he drops, you may run out of mouse pad. I won't, because I can, like, kick my elbow back and use the very base of my pad, but even this is not ideal. So, what you want is to set your home position down and then look up. So I'm ready to react, and then if he falls, I'm falling down into my home position so that when we when we start dueling, I'm comfortable. So really anticipating as well with this particular situation, not setting our own position up high is a very good tip. Um, the other way around, let's have a look. You, I think you do want to set your home position here because then you're ready to you can lift up and fight like this, and you can also. Uh, react like this. Yeah. So you want to set your home position down at that point, like when you're actually up high, but when you're on the ground, really don't set it up here. Don't set your home position up here. Bring it down. And then, yeah, set it here and then come up. I may be rambling a little bit too much, but that's the point of this video. This is for the people who, who don't know how to use low sensitivity, and I want to give you more information than you really need, um, especially since you can't see my mouse and what I'm actually doing, which is really, you know, impeding it. Uh, yeah, let's have a look. Is there anything else I needed to say? Uh, yeah, so in warm-ups for matches, I encourage you to practice 90 degree turns, to practice 180 degree turns, and in custom games to practice you know, under no pressure, just going around the corner. Maybe with rockets, that might be the best, uh, or, or particular angles, you can use the rail gun. But yeah. With slash sliding, um, you could incorporate it as well. You can use it <laughs> as you as you practice your sliding skills. But uh, yeah, whenever I'm in the air, I'll say it one more time, just a bit of clarity. Whenever I'm in the air, my mouse is off and ready to come down where I expect I need to flick. And that really makes it fluid and easy for me. So there's no frantic swaying. It's like sweeping, and it's more like this, where you pick it up and and swing, pick it up, swing, and not this. Uh, swaying motion. I actually do that for Anarchy. I, I think for Anarchy it's a bit much to do this, to when you when you pick it up and lift it uh, every time, but um, yeah. I'm actually, yeah, I'm going off topic. This was, this was so good for a while and then I just started to ramble. Anything else? I need better notes. <laughs> okay, well I think that's clear enough. Really, uh, 90 degree turns, 180 degree turns, that's how you take care of it. Learn the muscle memory, start with the desired end state, 
and then reverse engineer to find out where you need to, where your particular position A and position B are. Okay. So I hope that's helpful, and uh, see you later.